He's one of England's most capped international players. Seaman is the man here. He's one of the world's most decorated goalkeepers. And it's somehow kept out by Seaman. That is a fantastic save. This is Seaman Says with David Seaman. And Seaman, what a magnificent save. Hear him. Breathtaking. Like never before. Hello and welcome to Seaman Says with me, David Seaman and Lindsay Hooper. How have you been, Lindsay? It's been a good week, hasn't it? It's been pretty good, hasn't it? I don't think anyone could have predicted 6-2 to England in that game. But they just they just looked like well, they got I know what you mean by prove. anyone. Uh, yeah. Oh, like the dogs. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, Pete yeah. and Billy. Uh, do, we, it, do you replace mascots so early on? What do we do? <laughs> Where's the love, Lynn? No, but it was a great opening game, you know, and, you know, Iran scoring two goals was, I felt, I felt flattered them quite a bit, but, um, mm. no, it was a really good performance, I felt, you know, and good to see Maguire back in there, Cal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, Did doing well, well, to be fair. Yeah. 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 No, it was, uh, it, it was good. It was a solid performance. Um, you know, and even even then, I still think of, like, Pickford having, like, he had one, to set, one really good save to make near the end, which was a brilliant save, by the way. Um, you know, so overall, yeah. it was a good yeah. opening game. Yeah, you know, now, obviously, that teases up very nicely for uh, USA. A couple of standout performers as well. I know, I know we don't want to take anything away from the group because they did brilliantly, but look, I mean, Jude Bellingham at 19 years old is now being talked about by everybody. Um, and then Bukayo <laughs> Saka getting two. Both of them really, really yeah. stood out, I thought. Yeah, exactly. You know, and especially with with um, Jude Bellingham, you know, you look at him and you think, oh, that, he's a player that he, he looks like he's been playing for England for years. You know, and when you mm-hmm. watch him play, you think, yeah, he must be about 25, 26 because he, he looks like he's got that much experience. So he's 19. And yeah. Yeah, he's, that's a very, very special talent. And uh, I'm sure that there's going to be a lot of interest in him. I've got a clip actually of me, David. Um, this is when I used to do final score and do the match updates. And I was I was watching Birmingham. I mean, so many people did this because he his talent shone so early on, but he must have been 15 nearly 16 and I was at St Andrews watching a game and in one of my reports I said there's a player here his name's Jude Bellingham and he's head and shoulders better than any other player on the pitch and I've got this clip and I've I've kept it because um you know to know what he's gone on to do I think everybody when when his number was retired from Birmingham thought wow that's a that's a huge move to retire a number after such a little amount of time but it, it is clear that he was always destined to go right to the top. And I don't know whether you've heard the same rumours, but his brother, he's got a younger brother called Job. And some people at Birmingham say he's as good, which which is frightening. Yeah. But it's like, it's so good that you, that you notice that even at what was he, 15, 16? Mm. When he was playing, when you noticed him, that he was going to be that much better than... And and he certainly is, you know. There's no doubt. He's he's a player. I nearly said for the future, but he's not. He's for now, isn't he? Is that he's good? For now. I think one of the things that struck me straight away is his maturity. And I, and, I, and people think that as a, a mentality thing. And I know that he does speak very well, but I don't mean about maturity off the pitch. I mean it on the pitch. He just looks so mature in the way that he was playing. And. Um, I've only seen a bit of Job, his brother. I saw him as a substitute come on in a cup game um, live. And so I can't really judge too much on his brother at the minute. But yeah, from from a Jude point of view, that was something that always stuck out, that he he played older than his years. Yeah, and he, and what, what I loved as, as well is that like even when he scored his goal, and it's his first goal you know, for England um, in a World Cup, you know, his celebrations were like, that of like an experienced player as though it was like, yeah, you know, that that's normal. That's going to happen, you know, and it was, um, <laughs> it was just so good. It was so good to see. And then obviously then you look at, uh, you look at Saka as well and, you know, for him to get two goals, it was brilliant because obviously a lot, the last tournament that he played in didn't end very well at all. Um, you know, so it's great for him to to get straight back into it and um, and scoring two goals like that will give him a great boost. There was that lovely story to do with Jack Grealish and his celebration as well. So he does the the arm movement, um, which I'm sure you're better at than me, David, yeah. with your dancing on ice experience. 
Um, <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I don't do Strictly. <laughs> <laughs> well, you did the mass dancer, so there you go. You're, you're one step away. I know, yeah, we did some skating moves in that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that was for a little boy that had cerebral palsy called Finley and a, a boy that reached out to yeah. Jack, knowing that he's got a sister that suffers from cerebral palsy as well. And yeah, it was such a lovely touch that he did that celebration, that he remembered him. He then even messaged about him. So I, th- I thought that was lovely. Um, maybe one of the the takeaways from the six goals, though, this is something we haven't mentioned, is that Kane didn't get one of them. I know. And, and that as, as much as that sounds bad, I, I feel it's a positive because it just shows that the rest of the team are now chipping in with goals. Um, you know, Harry's going get, to get a lot of goals anyway. Um, you know, and he showed that, you know, he didn't get any goals, but he, he had a couple of assists, you know, so he's, he's still playing really well. Um, but it's, it just shows that it's, you know, the team is like, it's, it's an all round team, you know, scoring six goals and Harry not getting a goal is, is, is really good news. And, uh, you know, he will start chipping in with his goals sooner or later, but, um, yeah, I was, I said it in an interview last night because I was at uh, I was at a dinner with uh, with Piers Morgan at a, 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 an awards ceremony, and I said like I said oh yeah I said, how good was it that Kane didn't score and he was like yeah you know almost like I was like against Harry Kane because he's Tottenham but I was like no but it's because like <laughs> it's like no it's the rest of the team you know the rest the rest of the team are chipping in and Kane hasn't scored that's brilliant news that's that's great for the future of the team and he was like oh yeah I get your point now. <laughs> <laughs> the one the one downer on the whole Kane thing obviously was the potential injury and we you know he's having a, a scan before we play USA. But yeah. would I don't want to moan at Gareth because I think he actually got a lot of things right for this game, but to keep Kane on and he was on the pitch for twenty eight minutes after that tackle in a game mm. where we've clearly won it, do you not think he should have come off a little bit earlier? Well, yeah, but that that'll be down to Harry. Harry will know how bad it is, you know, while he's mm. playing. After when he's after he went over on it, um, he will know, you know. And trust me, I've I've had I, I dislocated my ankle in in China playing for Arsenal in a friendly game, and ever since that, every time now that I go over on it, there's hardly any problem with it, you know. And it, sometimes I proper go over and it alert for a little bit, and then because everything's been stretched and that, it doesn't it doesn't affect it as much. And only okay. only Harry will know how bad it is, you know, while he's playing. And if he knows that it's going to be a problem, he'll, he'll have got himself straight off. You know, he would have signaled to the bench and got off. But, um, yeah, it was – I know what you mean. And the fact that he's having a scan, I'm hopefully touch wood, it's only a precaution. But, um, yeah, once he's – because he's, he's known for ankle problems, isn't he? You know, so yeah, he is, hopefully, yeah. he's got, he's, mm-hmm. uh, hopefully he's got my elastic ankle and uh, he's just got him sprung <laughs> straight back into position. <laughs> and, and he didn't end up in a Chinese hospital either. <laughs> no, no. Trust me, you don't but want that to escape right now. <laughs> yeah, I remember <laughs> saying that. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't help yeah. either that there was 14 minutes added time and then 10 minutes added time. I don't think it helped oh. with that either. I know. Yeah, it's been amazing because there's been like almost a full game of added time now, aren't there? There's been over 90 minutes of extra time, you know. Yeah, so, within three or yeah. four games, there's yeah, basically been like an extra game of, of a football, which is crazy. Yeah. What do you think of that, the added time? Because they're doing it because of all the, because of the time wasting. Yeah. Um, I, I like I like what the, the point that they're trying to make, you know, but they could also clamp down on the time wasting as it's happening. You mm-hmm. know, rather than adding it on, you know, because then obviously players are getting they're getting tired. You know, there's no doubt about it. You know, and you see that when, especially when, when games go into extra time, you know, and then penalties. You know, there's not a lot <laughs> happens in that extra time. Um, you might you know, have so already played extra time, time before you get to extra time. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Can you imagine that? <laughs> and I was, and I was extra time. <laughs> you know, but that's what you, you know. And, I'd, yeah, I'd, I'd rather it be cracked down on um, when it's happening. You know, like show a, a yellow card or you know, or have a word and then say right any more, and then it's going to be I'm going to start carding you. But um, yeah, it's can then does anybody know? Is it if if you get two yellow cards, is that mean a suspension for the next game? As in two separate games? 
I think it's two, yeah. Because also that brings into question as well the whole wearing of the One Love armband and the reason why Harry Kane and Gareth Bale decided not to do it because the FAs instructed them not to because they would get a yellow card. And I feel, David, that if it had been three yellows, they might have gone with it. But I think two yellows and a suspension, they didn't want to risk it. That's why, yeah. If a player receives two cautions in two different matches, he will automatically be suspended from his team's subsequent match. Yeah. That's what it says here. Yeah. 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 So that, and and that carries on for quite a long time, doesn't it? You know, because I think the wipe cleaning, is it the semifinals or something like that? You know, so that's like a lot of games to get through Mm. without, you know, without getting, picking up cards. And I just, you know the way that the referees like show the yellow cards nowadays. It's um, that's that's quite well, a tough rule. That which I game think. was it? One particular. Was it the, I'm trying to think which one. There was like five yellow cards in the first half. Which one was yeah. that? I've watched a lot of football. Oh, no. <laughs> I can't remember which game um, it yeah, is? I've watched, oh. I've watched all of them. Um, I, I know. I feel the same. <laughs> <laughs> I think it might have Adam been the Wales yeah, you, USA, USA were really good USA first really half, weren't they? Yeah, but they really asserted themselves and kept getting yellow cards. It might have been that one. No, that the, the Welsh game was was like America were good first half, you know. They just like, but it was like they weren't pacing themselves, you know. Like they were like <laughs> full out attack, everything first half, and then second half it was like, whoa, where have the legs gone from this team? Yeah. It was like Wales, they got straight back on top, and you know it was um, as they say, it was a game of two halves, to- two totally different halves for for USA. Yeah, if you'd have tuned in just for the second half, you'd have thought, "Wow, USA didn't do very well." But actually, they they were brilliant in the first half. It was one of those. Um, I d- I did think that um, Weyer was was looking sharp. I mean, that finish as well. He didn't hesitate to do. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, that was a that was a proper striker's finish. He he waited for the goal and then for the goalkeeper to go down and then just lifted it. I think it was like the the outside of his foot just lifted it over and it was yeah it, that was a that was a proper proper striker's finish and uh, I'm sure of uh, the Weir family of that's rubbed down mm. on him you know, because that was proper. It's really in the DNA, finish. isn't it? Clearly, exactly, yeah. exactly. Um, in terms of goalkeepers, how about Schmeichel, Kasper Schmeichel in that save? Um, it, it kept it nil-nil for Denmark against Tunisia because Tunis- Tunisia looked dangerous. Yeah. Um, but I, I've, I just took to socials and saw so many people that I know saying that that save should be patented for the Schmeichel family. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, did, I, did, I haven't seen it, if I'm honest. So was it like the typical like, arms out, legs yeah, out yeah, yeah, save yeah, type thing? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he's, and he, he does, he does a lot of the saves like his dad, you know, and I told the story last time, didn't I, about when, you know, when I was coaching Casper and he was catching the ball really weirdly. Yeah. You know, and, and and he was, I was like, oh, you can't catch it like that. And then I was like, oh, your dad catches it like that. <laughs> like, Carry on. <laughs> and like you said, you know, the, the starfish save that that Peter was brilliant at. You know, obviously Casper's he's learned that and doing it really well. And um, yeah, to keep it at nil nil was you know makes it even more important. You know, but um, you know, I still got, I still think back to uh, to Jordan saving the second half. That was a brilliant save. Yeah, that's really um, good. And then. The was it the um, it was the Iranian goalkeeper, weren't it, that got smacked in the face? Yeah. Oh, and then they should have the yeah. concussion sub. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree about this, Lindsay, about the concussion sub, and I'm, and I saw Alan Shearer mention it afterwards, and that has got to come in because if it doesn't, we're going to learn a really tough lesson sooner or later because the protocol is not being stuck by, mm. you know, it's not being done properly. Um, you know, and the fact that if you have a, a concussion sub means that someone can go on, they can assess the player properly because no player will ever say, I want to go off, you know, no matter what's happened to them, you know, they don't know. And it's against like, it's almost like the DNA, you know, they're like, no, I don't want to go off. I don't want to go off. You know, even if they are concussed, they'll still try and get back on. So it needs to be taken out of their hands and then someone else to assess them either, either, uh, at the side of the pitch, obviously, if it's a goalkeeper behind the pit, behind the goal, um, and you need that little bit of extra time because, you know, I, I'm, I'm a little bit worried about something else might happen. You know, and we saw yeah. with the Iranian goalkeeper that you know after what was it five minutes he he, he went back he went down again and that, and then that was it. You know, so 
you know, that it's not right what's happening at the moment. Why isn't someone coming down harder on them? I don't know. I think, you know, the only way that you do get around it is doing that, the concussion substitution. You know, let, let another goalkeeper go in for 10 minutes or whatever it needs, you know, till you've assessed the mm. player properly. You know, and, and you know, cause I don't want to, I don't want to, be talking about the other side of it when something really does go wrong because we've let a player back on too early. Shock of the early games, Argentina being beaten by Saudi Arabia, not only being beaten, oh. but they were leading 1-0. So to to come from behind for the Saudis, my goodness, what a result. And have you seen that they've got a national holiday off the back of winning that one game? <laughs> 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 that, that's brilliant <laughs> but I watched the yeah, game so I, I got I don't know why I couldn't get I couldn't stay asleep oh, no. and, and I, I came down and I was like oh there's a game on at 10 o'clock so I started watching it and I was watching Argentina I was thinking like they're taking this game quite easy you know they didn't seem to be in any rush or anything and then they scored and then they had like quite a few goals disallowed for offside and and then I was thinking to myself you know they're not they're not fully going for this you know and they weren't the the Saudis were playing a really high line and even I could see and I'm not tactically that good but I could see that like the ball over the top was the ball to play but they kept playing it too late and then I was thinking like but they're not really on it Argentina and then obviously Saudi Arabia got back into it and then went in front and I, I must admit I did have a little chuckle to myself when when I saw when I was watching Argentina like really really scrambling towards the end you know it's it just reminded me of when we played them in, in the World Cup in 02. Not 02, in, in 98. And do you remember when, uh, who was it? Was it Saul Campbell scored and, and Shearer fouled the goalkeeper? And they tried yes, to be like really I sneaky by taking a free kick early. And we were all like celebrating and they like tried to get us on the counter attack while we were celebrating because they knew the goal had been disallowed. And I was, I never forgot that. And then, I, so that's why I had a little chuckle to myself yesterday about, about them really scrambling. I thought, <laughs> yeah, what goes around? <laughs> <laughs> took, a, it took a while for karma to come back, but it did. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You, honestly, you don't forget those sort of things. <laughs> also worth highlighting that, that Messi was in a bit of a pickle anyway, wasn't he? Um, because Argentina have gone yeah. in to try and bid for the next World Cup um, that's available, and Saudi Arabia have as well, and now he's endorsing the Saudi Arabia bid. So it's all a bit messy, a little bit like the whole <laughs> yeah. Qatar situation was messy. Mm. I mean, I don't know. I just, I, I wonder, yeah. the morality in football really needs to be questioned, doesn't it, at the minute? Yeah, you know, and especially where where it's a you know what countries it goes to, you know, because you know we've we've there's been a lot of discussion about whether it should have or should have gone to Qatar. I was totally against it. I couldn't believe it when it was going there, you know, because as we all know, football is supposed to be for everyone to watch, and in Qatar, not everyone can go and watch it. You know, mm. so you know there needs to be some real protocol on and um, but you'd like think FIFA would have done this already, but. Obviously, with Qatar, they didn't do it very well, you know. So in the future, so are we talking? We're not talking about the next World Cup, are we? We're talking about uh, it's twenty thirty. I think the next available one yeah. to bid for um, twenty thirty. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. So I, yeah, because I was thinking like, oh, it's in Argentina. Messi might even try a comeback. <laughs> <laughs> God, how old would he be then? <laughs> Oh, I know. <laughs> Neil Ronaldo's Ronaldo's age. Age. Yeah. And speaking of Ronaldo, when when does he play? He, he must play today. When do Portugal no, play? Oh, is Thursday. It? Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm quite um, I'm quite looking forward to that just to see how he uh, how he performs, especially especially now he ain't got a club. Yeah, this is his shop window. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I was sat next to Piers Morgan last night. And um, and the, the news came in on his phone. He's like, "Look, look, look what's happened!" And I was like, "Oh right!" And he he got like this smug look on his face. And I, and he showed me a picture of uh, he presented Ronaldo with an Arsenal shirt with a number seven on the back. Right? Yeah. And he went and he looked at me. He went, "Right now for phase two, let's get him to Arsenal." <laughs> 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 which was quite funny I thought yeah he just wants and to see like, the world I burn <laughs> and, uh, I know I was like yeah I would take him any day he's like exactly you get into most teams any day but yeah mm. but no, I'm looking forward to seeing him play um, you know I think this could be uh, 
hopefully, I want it to, I want it to be really special for him. But we'll see. Seaman says, in conversation. This week, we're joined by a fellow England number one who made his World Cup debut just a couple of months before his 40th birthday, David James. Here's a quick taste of that chat. I wanted to ask you about your your World Cup experience. You know how how did you feel because it came on like late in your in your career, didn't it? You know, to actually, you know to get just to, a little to bit. play in two thousand and ten. <laughs> you know, but how how did you feel? Because I want to I want to listen to you first because then then I'll tell you how I felt in ninety eight. Well, um, if I think we have to go back, I mean, I'm obviously I missed out in ninety eight, <laughs> two thousand and two. Actually, Dave, right now, now we now because this is a, a good open conversation. Maybe you can um, explain something as well. So, two thousand two, the game against Brazil. Yeah. Um, you go up for a cross in the first half or a, an aerial ball, yeah. and then you, as you caught it, you went down and you literally did a handstand on the ball. You arch your back <laughs> over, and you're injured. Um, yeah. oh, David, I Clem, know that Clem's, it was a Clem's on the bench. It was a proper full on, a proper full on handstand. <laughs> On the ball. Yeah. Um, yeah. On the ball, yeah. <laughs> Skills. <laughs> Skills, yeah. It, it wasn't the uh, it wasn't the most no. glamorous dismount, it has to be. <laughs> it wasn't stylish, was it? <laughs> uh, but, yeah. Um so Ray Clements looks down the bench, because it was literally one long bench, and he stares me straight in the eyes and he goes, Nigel, get warmed up. No and way. It just, <gasps> no way. Yeah. It, it, it crushed me because <laughs> while you're while you're preparing for games, I'm I'm training my nuts off, literally thinking yeah. that I am the best goalkeeper in the world. You don't look like a Nigel, if that helps. <laughs> no, yeah, not, not much of a Nigel. <laughs> no. uh, Clem, Clem didn't even look that hard, man. He looked me straight oh. in the eyes. Um, oh, anyway, God. so that was my that was my closest moment to playing. I think. Strangely, and again, this is this is something that gets lost in the how can I say in the ob- observing the World Cup. I mean, you watch so many games, blah blah blah. We follow your team. In two thousand and six, we had a situation where I think Robbo got booked in the quarterfinals or the last group, whatever it was, the first knockout round of sixteen. Right, he got booked, and um, I said to to Steve McLaren, I said, "Look, I haven't played any games." Da da da. Um, you know, Robbers got booked. If if he gets booked in the game against Portugal, then you know I might have to play in the semi final. He goes, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And I said, well, look, we haven't done any set plays. None, no set. The, the subs hadn't done any set plays. It was always the first team. So um, as it happened, he didn't get booked in. But there was almost a chance there that I could have and I, <laughs> sat on the bench thinking, oh, he's taking a bit of time over that. Hmm. Anyway, um, that didn't happen. So. <laughs> So 2010, just to try and speed it up, I I literally didn't know. I think Rob Green might have known, but myself and Joe Hart didn't know who was going to start against USA. Right. Um, to the point that um, Fabio had, he used to do the flip chart and and had, before we got on the bus, he'd do the flip chart with the team on it. It was like deal or no deal. And that's the first you, you sat do. there going, am I playing? Or, yeah. Wow. Wow. Um, the the worst the, Dave, the worst thing about it was I didn't expect right if it wasn't me I thought it was going to be Joe all right because Joe was seemingly in top form so it's one of these things anyway so Rob go, Rob obviously starts I'm sat, <laughs> sat next to Joe on the bench when was it Dempsey scores oh gosh don't uh, I was and, in America uh, watching that surrounded by Americans oh. <laughs> after I'd given it the big oh, oh don't talk to us about football don't talk to us about football we're England thank you very much <laughs> oh my god yeah 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 <laughs> <laughs> that learnt yeah um, yeah I, I said to Joe Joe whatever you do right now the cameras are on us do not laugh and I wasn't, it wasn't like <laughs> we were going <laughs> to. Yeah. I mean, oh. to be fair, it was, it, Rob made some big saves in the second half to keep it at one all, if you like. Um, and even after then, it was kind of like, you know, what, what do you, what do you do? How do I get in now? Do I not? Does Joe get in? Didn't know who, <laughs> who number two was oh. even. Um, yeah. And kind of, Clem kind of, gave me a clue that I was going to play against Algeria. So in answer to your question, Dave, I was 39 years old. 
um, kind of written the World Cup off after 2006 and been given an opportunity by uh, Capello, first of all, to get back in England squad and then obviously uh, into the into the World Cup squad. So uh, playing that game, yeah. And, it, and again, it's one of these weird... I'm talking about Jordan when he's 6-2. We drew nil-nil. And there's a bit where you go, clean sheet. But I didn't have, I can't remember making any saves or anything of no, but you kind of keep the clean sheet, but don't win the game. And it's kind of like, I, I'm, I've got a lot of ambivalence towards this. Um, I'd rather have won three, one, three, two, five, four. Do you know what I mean? And then, yeah, is there a part, second, of all, part of you also that goes, well, did my job? No goals in. So, you know. No, no, no. It, 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 do you know what? It's, it, it, Adam, it's, a, it's so weird because you, you go to the World Cup to win it. Mm not just appear in it. And I, sure. I, I, I'm sure there's many, many players and many nations that are just happy to be there, but we are England and we were there to win it. So drawing against USA, dropped two points. Drawing against Algeria, we dropped two points. So we haven't started well. Um, and I'm involved in one way or another in both of them. So it's kind of like I'm part of the reason that we haven't won. I'm talking about that, you know, that the long throw or the big kick. Well, that needed to happen against Algeria and then everything would have been perfect. Yeah. But... You sort of walk off and it's like, okay, clean sheet. Yeah, great. No, drop points. Oh, no. Um, and then we go into the next game. Again, Two, I think a 2-0 win would have put us top of the group. Uh, instead, it was 1-0. And I, I, I don't know if you're like this, Dave. I, I had a kick for Wayne Rooney and I kicked it too hard and he ran through yeah. and nearly got a one-on-one with a goalie. And it's that one where you think, why didn't I throw it? Why didn't I just... Do it a little bit less, and Waza, Waza could have scored. No, that, he could have you, finished. The way the that group. you're thinking now, Jamo, is exactly what I say to the goalkeepers now. Whatever happens, you always think to yourself, "How could I have done that better?" And that's what you do. Mm. You do that like just naturally, and that's why you were where you were. You know, you it's it's something in goalkeepers that they always want to. Sometimes some goalkeepers are happy with what they do, but I always say to goalies, "What else could you have done that would have made it better?" And you do that naturally, mate. Who says? I love the fact that you're doing yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, but Dave, Dave, I I don't know if I need to be thinking about it 12 years later when I'm cutting the grass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but how good is your grass? You might need some therapy there. <laughs> uh, I'm sure there's a helpline somewhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Are you desperate in the knockout stages for for penalties at some point so that the goalkeeper has his moment? I used to love penalties. You know, uh, I, I was going to say, who are you love, asking this? <laughs> yeah, because it was a chance of glory, weren't it, for us? And it's and it's a chance of even if, if you let one in and, it, and you let it under your body or something, nobody blames you. No, they go, you they can only even, take like, the question. You never see a goalkeeper get blamed for, for letting a penalty in, even when he should have saved it. You know, it's still like wiped off, and it's so it's a, it's a chance of glory. And you know, a lot of people say, "Oh, you must be so nervous." And I'm like, "No, I used to love going into penalties." Mm. <laughs> no. No, I, 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 There's the answer. <laughs> no, I, 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 I don't know. I don't think you want it. I think there's there's that. There's that bit of nerves, and, and I think my experience with Portugal again um, in 2004, th- there was a mad moment in that where I think Sol Campbell had a goal this loud, and they ran down. And had they scored from their sort of counter attack, then we would have been out. And then when when the final whistle goes, you're glad that it's gone to penalties. But I I had a, a, like you, Dave. I'm sure you get this little moment where you collect yourself or do something to put you in the right. Uh, frame of mind in, in the right mindset yeah. um, and Gary Neville followed me round shouting in my ear you can do it you can do it you're the best da, 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 da. and it was just really <laughs> really unsettling <laughs> I can imagine him doing that as well <laughs> yeah and uh, to be fair Gary I mean he was doing what, what came natural, natural to him it wasn't about him doing something wrong it was just it didn't work for me then you, you go into the penalties and all of a sudden it's like and it was, it was a funny moment as well, because um, you know today how they, they basically they, they, you can have your iPad next to the net. <laughs> you yeah, water bottle talking water to you, I'm sure that <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you've got all the information you want. I, I mean, I could I could download myself right now every penalty um, that any goalkeeper's facing the World Cup and give that information to whoever you need to, whatever. Um, yeah. Back then, we didn't have any info at all. 
we, we played France and apparently yeah. no one knew where Zidane put his penalties because he hadn't taken one for two years. It was all these mad things. Anyway, the first one, I've gone to the guys before I've walked down. I've gone, do you know where he's going to go? And they went, yeah, he'll probably go right because Gary and Gary Neville knew everybody. So I'm on the line and I'm going, is it, is it left or is it this way? <laughs> Who's right? <laughs> <laughs> well, the, uh, I suppose the irony was I dive, I dive the right way and he put it over the bar. So in a way, even though I didn't save the penalty, I put him off. And then I think, I can't remember who said the next one, it might have been Ronaldo. And I was trying the same thing. And then every other one went in, including a, a Panenka. And then oh, that's, you know, yeah. when you're in that position, you're just like, ugh. Come on, Darius yeah. misses the goalie shoot. Um, Ricardo scores without his gloves on. And the, you know the worst <laughs> feeling. I went back into the changing room. I picked my phone up. Robbie Fowler text message. Unlucky Schultz. <laughs> <laughs> That's harsh. <laughs> yeah. Oh. I, got, I kind of got over it pretty quickly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You can hear more of that chat with David right here tomorrow or you can watch it in full on our YouTube channel. Plus, we'll be back on Friday to preview as we build up to England's match against USA. So we'll see you all then. This is a Listening Dog Media Production.